Hey, I'm Adam Kelly. I wanted to do a little different sort of video this time. It's still ML Agents related, but it's uh, more about how you handle errors. So for those of you who don't know, I worked at Microsoft as a full-time software engineer for over six years. And one of the most valuable skills I learned there was how to debug code and how to understand other people's code. It's something that's absolutely essential there because as it's such a huge company, there's code coming from everywhere. I was on the Windows team for a long time and the Windows code base is gigantic. So if you hit an error message, you may not even know who to ask. And if, even if you know who wrote the code, it's very possible that they don't even work at the company anymore and no one knows how the code actually really works without digging in and reading through it and stepping through code. So there are times uh, or there were times when the only way for me to figure out what was going wrong was to use a debugger and step through the code. Now, if you're a seasoned software engineer, you know this already, and I wouldn't say that this video is necessarily targeted at you. It's more for people who are newer to coding um, or maybe just have done it more uh, as a hobby. Generally, what people do, I think, when they hit a problem, at least based on what I see, is they first will search Google, see if they can find the issue. Then if nothing turns up on Google, they'll go to a forum somewhere and ask the question. And a lot of times, if it's a specific to that project type of error, then you can get help. But if it's an error like the one I'm gonna show you in this video, where it's like a list is, you're indexing beyond the limits of a list, then no one's gonna be able to figure out what's going wrong without you doing a lot of extra work. So you can save a lot of time by learning how to step into code and figure out how to do that. So I'm gonna show you how I approached a problem that I had a few days ago when I was working with ML agents. And I want you to pay attention to how I find the exact spot where the problem is happening and then sort of follow the clues as to where that error is coming from and how we got there. So this is intended to be instructional, but also motivational. I realize you're probably not gonna come across this exact error message, but hopefully the technique that I show uh, is gonna be helpful to you as we go through it. Here's a project I was working on a few days ago where I wanted to train this little car to drive around this track without falling off. I don't think I'm going to pursue it any further. It ended up being kind of boring, but uh, it was interesting because I hit an error message that was particularly confusing to me and took me quite a while to debug. But I want to show you sort of an abbreviated version of that debugging now so that you can see sort of how I approach a debugging problem. And I don't really expect you to be able to understand everything along the way, but just try and follow along and see the technique rather than understanding everything that's happening here. So in this case, I had trained my little car here to drive a few different times and, you know, tried different experiments and, you know, did different observations, like changed the angles of the, uh, of the ray perception and things like that. And then after I'd done a number of training runs, I pulled in the trained neural network. So that's this one, the .nn file from my um, ML agents training directory, dragged that in, attached it to the brain, and then made sure that my academy was unchecked on control, and then I hit play. And of course, expecting it to work because training was working, and then seeing this. And I'm like, okay, great. What's happening? So I go to the console and we've got these rapidly increasing number of errors and they're all the same error. So I stop it and take a look. So they're all the same and always with Unity, make sure that you scroll all the way up to the top and check the first error because sometimes it's different. And if it's different, it means that that error might have caused all of the other errors. So you should always tackle that one first. In this case, this error message is the first one. They're all the same, so it doesn't matter in this case, but we're gonna take a look at it first because it is first. So 
The issue is saying argument out of range exception. Index was out of range, okay? Must be non-negative and less than the size of the collection. So what this means is we have some sort of collection of things and the index is trying to access outside of that list of collection of the collection. So let's say there's 10 elements inside the collection. It's trying to access, you know, I, I don't know, probably the, the 11th item is most likely what's happening here. It could be negative one or it could be a thousand, but and usually it's just what they call an off by one error, meaning that it's just outside of the list. So let's look a little bit deeper. And the parameter name is index, okay, whatever. Uh, it's calling system.throwhelper.throwargumentoutofrange exception. Okay, no new information there. System.throwhelper.throwargumentoutofrange exception. Okay, also more kind of gibberish, not super helpful. And then it says system.collections.genericlist.getItem. Okay, so what this is telling us is that we are trying to get an item from a list. That's new information. We knew that we had a collection, but now we know it's a list. And then on the next line, mlagents.inferencebrain.vectorobservationgenerator.generate. Okay, so it's passing in a, let's see, something called a tensor proxy and a batch size and then an agent info. Okay, that doesn't tell me a whole lot, but what it does tell me is where it's happening. And so this is happening in the ML agents directory, which is all code that I imported from the Git repo. So I didn't write any of this code that's happening in here. So that means that I have to go in and try and read someone else's code and understand it. So that's always a challenge and one of the biggest challenges as a programmer. But if we go inside and we look at it, we can actually click this and go to generator impl.cs, so generator implementation is probably what it means, and we can see exactly where this is happening. I had this open previously, which is why there's a breakpoint set to it. But we know it's a list that's being accessed, and we know that something is accessing beyond the bounds of the list. So if we hover over these in Visual Studio, it's going to tell us some information. So it's either this side of the equal sign or this side of the equal sign. This one is something called a tensor, uh, tensor type, I mean, with a tensor proxy dot data. So that's, that's what that is. It's not a list. And this one is a list of floats. So here's our, here's our culprit here. And something is making j be too big for this list, or it could be negative, but in this case, since we're doing a for loop starting at zero and only increasing, it's not, it's not a negative. It means we are at some point going beyond the bounds of this list with j being too big. And that means that this vec ob size t is likely bigger than our list. So rather than keep trying to figure this out without any proof of that, I always like to set a breakpoint and then try and break into the code and see if I can get it to happen while I'm watching it. So I'll set a breakpoint here, click attach to Unity, and then I'm going to play it again. And it breaks right in. And so I'll look, what's the size of vector obs? It's 82. And what's the size of this vector ob size t? 85. Okay, so there's our problem right there. We are telling it to go up to the 85th element of an array or a list that only has 82. So now our task is pretty simple, or at least at the, <laughs> it seems that way. We just got to figure out why this list is smaller than, than this thing. So one of them is wrong. And in our case, this vector obs is um, short for vector observations. So we can be pretty sure that our, um, has something to do with our collect observations method, which is where we do all these add vector obs. Okay. So it has something to do with the number of different vector observations. And I'm just, you know, 
I, I know that because they're using the same terminology, but you can, of course, go in and figure out what's going on. Where is this coming from? So I'm going to um, stop debugging this because I don't need to be for this. It's actually a little bit easier. Um, and then try and figure out, all right, where's the problem? So if one of these is wrong, let's figure out where they both came from. So we look at vector obs and we look at vector obs size t. So vector obs is coming from the agent info agent. So it looks like this is a dictionary of agents um, and agent infos. Okay. And we're getting the stacked vec vector observation. So this says, let's see, the previous agent vector observations stacked. The length of the history is specified in the brain parameters. Okay, so because it tells us that in the in the comment, which is very helpful, we can look at the brain parameters. And sure enough, we're passing in 82. And 82 is the size I was looking at, so that makes sense that it would be 82. Now, a keen observer might notice what I did not observe the first time, which is this error message that tells me that vector observation size of the model does not match received 82, but was expecting 85. Now, I of course didn't see that because I can be stupid sometimes, or let's just say not very observant myself. My vector observations were not good enough to catch that issue. So, um, back into the code, which is where I was when I was trying to figure out what was going on with this, I took a look and I looked at what this vec ob size t was coming from. So this is coming from this tensor proxy dot shape thing. And um, it's for some reason seeming it's accessing the last element of shape, which I don't really know what that is. So I'm going to jump back in with the debugger and we're going to take a look. Um, and I'll actually, maybe I'll, I'll break on this line and we'll hit play. And so here it's setting this to the shape and it's the last element in this array, the length minus one. So it's setting it to 85. Okay. So that's, that's clearly, that makes sense. That's where it's coming from. So now the task is to figure out where tensor proxy is coming from and what sets shape within it. So what's cool in visual studio, especially if you're uh, broken in with the debugger is you can go to this call stack tab and you can look inside here. So I'm going to pull this open by double clicking on it. And so it was that first parameter here, this tensor proxy one. Um, when generate is called, it's the first parameter. So I'll go here. So generate is being called here and it's passing in tensor. Okay. So now figure out where tensor is coming from. Um, looks like this is just accessing the name of tensor. So it's not coming from here. It's coming from this uh, list of tensors, apparently. And then we got to figure out where this list of tensors comes from. Okay, it's an I enumerable of tensors that's coming in from whatever calls this function. Okay, so let's hop up again. So now we're looking at this tensor generator dot generate tensors, which is being called and we're passing in this inference inputs. So that's the thing that if we go down one is being passed in as tensors. Okay. So let me hop back up. So now we need to figure out where this is coming from. Okay. So if I right click on this and go to find all references, then I can figure out where it's being set, which in this case seems to be happening here inside learning brain. So we're setting this inference inputs by calling this model param loader dot get input tensors. Okay. And it looks like model param loader is called right before. So we're doing this barracuda model param loader, get loader in check. And it's passing in the engine, which appears to be, what is engine? up here, an iWorker, and then it passed in a Barracuda model, and then brain parameters. 
Um, so in this case, looks like we're setting these things up above here. And Barracuda model is, looks like where our model is being loaded from. So this model.value, if you, if you actually look at what model is, it is car learning and it's a barracuda.nn model. So bingo, that's what's actually calling all of this. And it means that it's getting this. So what that told me when I found it, you know, after more than just a direct line of sight, uh, lots of going back and forth, is that this value that's coming all the way down into here as vector ob size t is at the end of the day, or maybe the beginning of the day, depending on your perspective, coming from the neural network file, from the .nn file. So this is saying whatever is in here has a vector observation size of 85, but the actual brain is looking for 82 of them and has only eight, 82 vector observations. So what had happened and what I realized at this point is that I had trained it previously with 85 vectors, vector observations, and then I tried to use it with 82, and it doesn't like that. Um, you can kind of use it the other way around, and it's, it complains, but it at least has enough observations to look at. And um, in this case, it, the other way around, it just the code doesn't work. So uh, the quickest solution is to go back into my agent and look and say, oh, right, because I removed rigidbody.angular velocity, which is three floats, x, y, and z. That brings the total back up to 85. So if I bring this back, then I can hit play. Now, if for some reason you can't do that, you can't just uncomment a line like I conveniently was able to do, it just means you're going to need to uh, redo it. So in this case, it's still complaining at me because vector observation size mismatch between continuous agent car and car learning. That's because I changed it back. It should be 85. And then I should be able to hit play. And sure enough, the error messages are gone. So that gives you an idea of how I approach these types of problems and how hairy it can get. Sometimes I get very frustrated and sweaty and <laughs> hot, uncomfortable as I'm going through it and frustrated. And, you know, I don't always figure it out in my first go. Wow, look, that's quite impressive. Nice job, Carr. Um, I don't always figure it out so quickly. And I it's not always a linear process. And sometimes you need to set more breakpoints and um, you know, swear at it and whatever you need to do to understand it. Um, but I definitely do recommend not giving up and trying to continue and understand that this code is not impenetrable. You can understand it as long as you have some basic intuition of how code works and the flow of code and that everything got somewhere somehow. So if you just follow it through the sort of um, maze or um, rat hole or whatever you want to call it, then you will eventually find where the thing is being called. And that's going to give you a bigger picture so that you can understand hopefully what the problem is. And in my case, it was simple user error. I just, you know, wasn't thinking and I grabbed a uh, neural network from a different training run and tried to run it after I'd made a modification. So that's about all I have to show. Um, hopefully you found this helpful. I know that this won't be immediately applicable to you unless you're extremely fortunate to have found this when you were having this problem. But the concepts, the, the technique is kind of the same, and, and it's how I approach most of my debugging problems like this. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought. I always appreciate the feedback. Take care.